Hello there, my name is Tim Walter. I am a house healer and an alternative life coach. Uh, this is one of the, my favorite places in the whole garden. It's by this rather lovely beech tree. You know, I get a lot of people coming to my YouTube channel looking for Hamish Miller's description of his near-death experience. And that's understandable because obviously we're all interested as we get a bit older about what might happen to us at end of life and what the next stage is. As many of you will know, Hamish had a very big influence on my life. He was my mentor for some seven years or so. That's why really I like to upload a video featuring Hamish every now and again. And today I want to do exactly that. What I'll be showing you later on is a very short clip from a program I made with Hamish when he was setting up the parallel community that was sort of the pinnacle of his second phase of his life if you like where he wanted to try to help people uh, understand that there was far more to life than they seem the seeming drudgery of the nine to five now obviously we we get that but a lot of the younger generation these days are struggling to find purpose and to find their joy and quite frankly hamish believed that you could find that joy through a mindful interaction with nature and through the subtle energies of the life that we lead and I completely and utterly agree with him. After Hamish's NDE his life changed completely and he found himself really getting to grips with the way that everything is interconnected on a very very deep level and the fact that our experience in the physical world, our day-to-day -day world, is very much the tip of the iceberg of what's going on. And what I want to show you today is a piece that I recorded with him in 2007. I'm going to show you this clip and what I'd like you to do is to listen to the, how Hamish is describing uh, society uh, over 10 years ago. Now, these days I think he would be horrified at the state of loneliness that we have and the amount of depression, for example, that we have in young people and the fact that so many of them feel completely and utterly detached and lost and wonder about what is the point because the material world has lost its appeal or is losing its appeal. We are hooked uh, on the technology and that detaches us from our physical well-being emotionally too. So Hamish would be pretty horrified about the state of where we are today 10 years on from when we recorded this video clip. What is clear is that in order to sustain a wellness we need a balanced environment. And part of that balanced environment is not only how we interact with our physical surroundings, but it's in creating the balanced environment within ourselves. If we have balance within ourselves, then actually that extends out into the way that we deal in the physical world with our environment, but also our emotional attachment to the environment too. And that's when things really start to change. Trees in particular are scientifically proven to have beneficial effects on the physiology of human beings. The Japanese have um, a, an expression that is translated into tree bathing, so they actually recognize the physical benefits of spending time amongst trees and woodland. This clip was recorded some 20 years or so after Hamish's near-death experience. But the thing that really stayed with him after that experience was his lack of fear of dying. As he always said, once you're not afraid of death, there's not much else to be afraid of. So here he is then, starting by talking about fear. I found that uh, when I got back, I had been very, very deeply disturbed by what had happened with my meeting, if you like, with the ancestors at Castle Hill. And it started a whole range of discussions about what, what on earth we could do about it. We were talking about it with, with lots of friends and we had this meeting at, at, uh, down at the Seed and a number of people, uh, different people come up every, every six weeks and we, we tune in with the earth and we, we celebrate the cycles of the earth. And this particular evening, it was pouring with rain, only five people turned up. Gary Merrill was, was sitting in the back there and he suddenly looked up and he said, everybody, every human being has the right to live in peace. And I got immediately enthusiastic that, that uh, this is the message we're going to get out. We all have the right to live in peace. And why shouldn't we? 
And who is making the decisions that make it impossible for us to live in peace? We've been, not all over the world, we've been around quite a decent part of the world. We've talked to people about this. And every one of them says, yes, we agree with you. There is a huge problem. We have to solve it. But what can I do? So how do we do anything about that? Uh, we all get together. Try and get all of these people together by means of a website so they have a contact. They know, what, they know what's happening in their, their local patch. They know what's happening in the next patch. And we want to encourage some sort of community way of thinking which says, OK, how does this... this uh, we can't sort the global problem out at the moment. How do we sort our local problem out? And if we have a local problem, is it the same as the community next door? If we have a solution to our particular problem, can we help that community? And it starts in a very small way with individual people. We don't want to be aggressive. We don't want to confront the existing situation. It's a complete waste of time. Let's, let's just set up something alongside it and say we accept what you're doing uh, and we accept that it is difficult to change the status quo, but we're not going along with you. What we're trying to do in, in, in parallel community is to bridge over traditional boundaries in, in every sense, in social sense, religious sense, uh, national sense, every sense, and get back to the importance of people. We want to become a centre of, of knowledge and, and uh, ways of, of moving our community spirit forward. The essence is to, to get people back to doing practical things. Practical things, not necessarily in the terms of, of making things, but practical uh, living with your neighbours not just your immediate neighbours, but your neighbours in the next country, if you like. And that takes us right through the whole religious bit and the whole political bit and, and, and things like that. Say, OK, your, religious, your religion is so-and-so, your colour is so-and-so, your country is so-and-so, but we're all people and we've forgotten how to communicate directly. At the moment, we're a, we're a species driven by fear. We are afraid of um, war. We're afraid of not coping. We're afraid of authority. And that's increasingly the case with the, with the setup at the moment. Uh, we're afraid of not being able to pay the mortgage. We're afraid of not having enough money. We're afraid if we have enough money that we're going to lose it. Uh, and we live in a state of fear all the time. There are people who are, there are many, many, many people who are afraid to walk out of their houses in case they're attacked, in case they're, this is not a way to live. There is no reason at all why we shouldn't live in joy. There needs to be some interference. There have to be laws. And, and yes, we, most of us are quite law-abiding, actually. But to create more and more and more and more restrictive laws that, that is, is, is just not the answer. These controls are becoming onerous. And we have to start re-establishing our, our rights and our freedom uh, and... Our ability to make decisions about our own lives but accept responsibility for them. What Hamish and I um, are interested in, um, which may seem a bit weird to other people, is the fact that nature around us is alive and we can make a difference um, by what we do and what we think and in making a difference to the world around us makes a difference to us. It's, a, it's a, a flowing from us to the earth and from the earth to us, so it's a knock-on effect. The earth responds to ritual and ceremony and attention. Um, that's why the ancient peoples built Stonehenge and different sacred places like that. So you can actually re-enchant old sacred places or create new ones yourself and the earth will respond to that on your estate, in your street, in your close and then in your town and out the energy goes and that really does have a profound effect. Every single thing we do, there's a reaction for every action. You become part of what you're around, you can't help that. And everything we do, everything, all of us do, is completely interconnected, negative or positive. So it might as well be positive. Doing nothing, I don't think it's really an option anymore. There is another way of living. And yes, it's, it's uh, actually, the, uh, I had this extraordinary out of the body experience and I went up and I, I, and I met the management. I call them the management, lovely people actually. And I realized in the short time I was up there, it might be microseconds, I don't know, but there is a huge amount of humor in the universe. And the humour and the, and the laughter and the joy is being crushed out of us because you can't control 
people who are laughing. It's time we, we just, just shook our heads and, and got out of this and, and said, OK, what are we going to do about it? So join Powell Community.